So how do I start a Bible study and a prayer routine with my kids? Do you guys have a kid or multiple kids and find it very difficult to find the right time to Bible study with them? You know, trying to incorporate Bible time in your daily routine with kids can be very difficult, but today I'm going to show you guys how my wife and I incorporate Bible time, prayer, and lessons into our kids' lives. What is up guys? If you're new here, my name is Matt and on this channel I strive to help people live a healthier lifestyle both spiritually and physically. And today I'm going to give you a few ways that my wife and I devote time to God and involve the kids. So as I've mentioned in my previous videos, my wife and I have four kids. We have three girls and one boy and their ages are 11, 8, 5, and 3. So we have a variety of ages here. And I'm going to tell you guys how and when our house studies God's Word and hope that these ideas can help you incorporate God's Word into your family study. Alright, so the first thing we must do is set up some type of order or schedule. You know, the one thing about kids, and it's true no matter where you come from, is that they need structure and guidance. You can't just let them do whatever they want because they're really like fish. They go to the first shiny object that they see, which nowadays is usually an electronic device. And as they get older, they need to learn responsibility and boundaries and how to manage their time. And if we don't teach them these things, we could be really setting them up for a harder road to navigate later in life. And one way that we have incorporated Bible learning and routine in our oldest child is that we got her a Bible for girls and my mom bought her a daily devotional for Christmas. So before school started back a few days ago, her summer schedule was that she had to get up and before she could get on any electronic device, she had to make her bed, she had to eat breakfast, and she had to study her Bible and daily devotional. Now notice the word I use here. I said study. I didn't say read. So there have been a few times that I've been in the kitchen and she's reading and it's a two minute session and then she closes the book. And then I'll ask her what today's lesson was about and then she realizes that she didn't let what she read sink in and then she reads it again. Now I don't act all pushy and you know I try to let her realize that she didn't study long enough. And I'm really trying to help her establish a meaningful routine which I hope she continues throughout her life. Now you may be asking, what do you do when school is in? Because that's pretty early. So pre-COVID, we actually had a great schedule down. I would get up early and I would have my quiet time and then I'd come up and I'd get the older three out of bed right about 6.15. And they would come down and we'd all eat breakfast together at the table and then I would read just one scripture verse to them and explain that verse. So you guys that have kids know that you're not holding an hour long revival with them because you'll lose their focus, but just a five minute verse of the day. So if you guys have kids that are younger than five or six, it's not about making sure that they have every little detail correct. It's about quantity with them, not quality. You know, talking about God's Word every chance you get. Now, did we miss some days? You bet we did, because we're a family of imperfect beings, and most of the time we missed because it was my fault because I wanted to sleep in. Parents, I want to say it starts with us. We have to make the choice to teach them and make that schedule. And men, as the spiritual leaders of the house, we have to step up and we have to be the ones to make sure it happens. Okay, so now that we're past all the COVID school closings, my wife and I actually made a life choice to homeschool. You know, we just started our second year this year and it's really been awesome for our family. All right, so I know not all families can do homeschool, but God has really blessed us with that ability. So our school schedule actually looks a little different now. So most days during the school, I'm actually gone before the kids get out of bed, so our Bible time had to shift. And my oldest during school time actually studies with my wife before they start the school day. They actually have a devotional book that they do together, and not only has this helped my daughter grow spiritually, but my wife and she have grown closer together in their mother-daughter relationship. Alright, so for the other kids, we have Bible time now a lot before bed. Uh, we have a family kids devotional book that we're going through. It's called The Purpose Driven Life, a devotional for kids by Rick Warren. It's a 365 day uh, devotional series and it's actually pretty good. I will say in the beginning it seems to have a lot of the same type of life lessons with just a little different twist, but later on it really does get good. And uh, you know, we just sometimes put the youngest kid to bed and then we'll sit on mine and my wife's bed and we'll just read to them. Uh, we talk to them about the devotional and we just let them ask questions. Uh, now, sometimes those questions are out in left field, but I'm telling you guys, right now is the time in their life when they are being influenced by so much in this world that is bad. You know, we have to sit with them and we need to listen and spend time with them and teach them about God's love, mercy, and His Word. All right, so I know there's some parents out there that are doing this and you feel like you're not getting anywhere, feel like the kids aren't listening to anything I say. 
Uh, believe me, I've been there. You know, you're trying to be serious and they're all talking over one another or someone starts laughing and then they all laugh because of a funny word that you said. Uh, but just keep it up. I strongly encourage you guys not to give up. Just keep throwing that mud at the wall and I promise something will stick. Because one day when your child comes to you and says that they want to accept Christ, it'll all be worth the headache and the craziness and the laughter that you went through. So one of the biggest things we've actually started doing this year is having a private Bible study with our oldest daughter, just my wife and my daughter and myself. And this is time that we get to spend with her and help her grow in her walk with Christ. Uh, she actually accepted Christ earlier this year, and it's our job as parents to help her grow in Christ and understand His Word and learn how to study the Bible. So now on Sunday nights after the other three are in bed, we get together and we sit down and we do a daily devotional that I actually got off the Bible app. Uh, if you guys don't use this app, it's a great app. I highly recommend it and I'll leave a link in the description below. Uh, if you guys do this Bible study time, make sure that you allow your child to help with the study. Uh, give them a passage to read or make sure they are involved in the follow-up questions. Uh, help them study and understand. Don't just read and check the box that we've done it. Okay, so this next part is bonus, and if you're still here in the video, thank you, and hit that thumbs up button. It really helps me grow this channel. Uh, there are so many opportunities to involve Christ and His Word in our child's life, like asking them after church on the car ride home, well, what did you guys learn about today? Uh, let them tell you about the lesson, and you know, you may have to do some guiding as they tell you, but it's great to see them remember what they've learned in church. All right, so another opportunity that involves talking about Bible stories or any other topic is around the supper table. Uh, we should be gathering around the table more with our kids. Uh, I'll be the first to admit that we sometimes watch a TV show while we eat on the couch, but you know we try to eat multiple times a week at the table. And we try to talk to them about their lives and incorporate God and His Word in those talks. Uh, just really getting to know them and listening to what's going on in their minds and in their lives and in their hearts. All right, so this last opportunity involves prayer. You know, pray with your kids at each meal and at bedtime or even before you leave for work or school that day. I want you guys to let the kids pray at the meals. Let them take that chance to speak because as they actually practice speaking now to God in front of the family, it won't be awkward or they won't have any fear when they do it in public later in life. Speaking of public settings, show your kids it's okay to pray to God over their food in public. You know, parents, don't be shy about praying at a restaurant. Well, I hope this information helps you parents incorporate God's Word and prayer at times throughout the day with your kids. I definitely know that trying to find time to talk about Jesus and pray with kids is not easy, especially with the rush lifestyle that we live now. But I hope this information will help you guys and give you encouragement to set aside that time with them and help them grow in God's Word. You guys let me know what you do with your kids and if there's something that I didn't mention in the comment section below. I love you guys and I hope you have a great week. Remember, lift those weights and grow that faith.